Thank you very much, President Dahl, for the very kind introduction. It is an honor and also an awesome responsibility for me to address you all on the eve of your first day of college classes. By now, you've signed up for your courses, you've met your roommate, you've probably even talked to a few of your professors, and, oh yes, most importantly, you've joined the SUNY Geneseo network on Facebook. <laughs> But this event tonight marks the end of your week of welcome. Now you're ready to officially begin life as a college student. Now from what I understand, as part of this speech, I'm supposed to give you some profound advice on how to make a successful transition from high school to college. I'm also supposed to give you a few pointers on how to get the most of your college education. I should say something intelligent, something memorable. It's my job to make sure that your undergraduate education gets started on the right foot and to make sure that you are guided down the proper path to success in college and beyond. So, here's my advice to you. As you navigate through college, never lose sight of the real reason you're here, to get an education. Sometimes, with all the distractions of college life, it's easy to forget this very simple fact. But in the end, you're here tonight about to begin your college career because you want to become knowledgeable in a wide range of fields and become an expert in at least one major area. You wisely chose SUNY Geneseo because you know that a liberal arts education will provide you with a broad background that will enable you to see the connections between many diverse areas of study. So now that it's all about to begin, what can you do to get the most out of your college education? Well, what I've found in my 10-year career as a professor here at Geneseo is that the students who get the most out of their education, the students who really thrive in college and go on to do great things afterwards, are the ones who are genuinely enthusiastic about their classes and about their education. This enthusiasm for the subject is, in my opinion, essential to the kind of real deep learning that defines the essence of a Geneseo education. This enthusiasm must be genuine. It cannot be faked. You can stay up cramming for an exam all night, and who knows, maybe you'll even get a good grade on the exam. But unless you have a deep-rooted, genuine enthusiasm for your studies, you will be missing out on perhaps the most important part of your education. So, here's my advice to you, which is also the title of my talk. Be a genuine enthusiast for education and knowledge. I'll say it again. Be a genuine enthusiast for education and knowledge. Just to be clear, let me say this one more time. <laughs> be a genuine enthusiast for education and knowledge. <laughs> Right, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm really saying here tonight is to be a geek. Right, thank you, thank you, distinguished professors Catalino and Housley for helping me out with the signs. But wait, you ask yourselves, why should I be a why should I be a geek? I mean, phew, aren't the geeks the ones getting pushed into lockers? Aren't geeks the 97-pound weaklings always getting sand kicked into their faces at the beach? Don't geeks have their lunch money stolen from them and their glasses broken? Seriously, have you ever met a geek who, at one point or another, was not the victim of like a totally massive wedgie? <laughs> who wants to be like that? Well, hold on a minute. Hear me out. Times are changing. Before I tell you why you should be a geek, I should probably tell you what the word geek means exactly. I'd imagine most of you probably think of a geek as someone who is extremely interested in computers, Star Trek, Dungeons and Dragons. Perhaps when you hear the word geek, you conjure up images of people like Anthony Michael Hall's character in the movie Sixteen Candles, or more recently, 
John Heater's title character in the movie Napoleon Dynamite. But what is the official definition of the word geek? Of course, the first thing I did in my research is something probably many of you would do. I looked up the entry for geek in, where else, Wikipedia. I read the entry there and clicked around for a while, and it was all very interesting, but somehow I just wasn't getting exactly what I wanted. I thought to myself, wouldn't it be great if there was somewhere I could go to look up how the word geek has been used in print? Maybe. I don't know, some big building with a lot of books inside? And then it hit me. I should go to the library. So I unglued my bloodshot eyes from the pale blue glare of my computer screen, walked out of my dimly lit office and trudged across this quad in what seemed like blinding sunlight to our fantastic library, Milne. As it turns out, Milne has a great collection of old dictionaries and it was interesting for me to trace how the definition of the word geek has evolved over time. I was surprised to learn that in the 1991 edition of the American Heritage Dictionary, Second College Edition, the only definition of the word geek was, and I quote, a carnival performer often billed as a wild man whose act usually involves biting the head off a live chicken or snake. So, as recently as 1991, the dictionary entry for the word geek mentioned nothing at all about computers, Star Trek, or wedgies. Nine years later, the 2000 edition of the American Heritage Dictionary lists the carnival performer definition of the word geek, but also includes two new definitions. One, a person who is foolish, inept, or clumsy. And two, a person who is single-minded or accomplished in scientific or technical pursuits, but is felt to be socially inept. <laughs> well, where did the word geek originate? To answer this question, I consulted the Oxford English Dictionary. The OED, as I can tell from your applause, that many of you know, is widely regarded as the most authoritative source of information regarding the etymology of words in the English language. The most recent printed edition of the OED, the second edition from 1989, which is also available in our library, by the way, claims that the word geek came from the low German word geck, G-E-C-K, which was used to mean a fool, a simpleton, one who is fooled or derided, a dupe. None other than William Shakespeare used the word geck in this context in several of his plays. The OED has lots of other interesting information about the word geek. For example, it turns out that the carnival performer definition of the word geek first appeared in Webster's Dictionary in the 1950s. Speaking of Webster's Dictionary, the online version of Webster's Dictionary lists the carnival performer definition but also includes an alternate definition of a geek as a person often of an intellectual bent who is disliked. <laughs> well, personally, I think it's high time that the Webster Dictionary remove the part about geeks being disliked. Speaking on behalf of geeks everywhere, I also hereby call on the American Heritage Dictionary to remove all allusions to geeks as being foolish, inept, and clumsy. Okay, okay, maybe geeks can be clumsy from time to time, but we are most definitely not foolish or inept. Thank you very much. In fact, I believe that the word geek, as it is used today, has lost most of the negative connotations that were associated with the original low German word geck. I believe that future editions of dictionaries should be revised to cast geeks in a more positive light. I mean, come on, nowadays, everybody likes geeks. Positive examples of geeks abound in our modern culture. For example, there's now a company called the Geek Squad that many of you may know about. Apparently you can call up these guys and they'll send somebody over to fix your computer, install a DVD burner, or set up a home network, things like this. Um, speaking as a lifelong geek myself, I never quite understood the business model for the Geek Squad. 
<laughs> Who would ever want to pay someone else to have all that fun? <laughs> now there's even a magazine called Geek Monthly that is devoted to all things geek. The most recent edition has on its cover the star of the TV show Heroes, Masi Oka, who apparently has an IQ of above 180. This particular issue of Geek Monthly also features a cover story provocatively entitled, Robo-Ethics, Will You Commit Robot Murder? <laughs> but geek worship is no longer restricted to such niche magazines and has now begun to infiltrate the mainstream media as well. In fact, the current issue of Newsweek has Mark Zuckerberg, the 23-year-old founder of the aforementioned, face, uh, aforementioned Facebook, on the cover. And an earlier edition of Newsweek from 2006 featured the Flickr founders, Stuart Butterfield and Katerina Fake, on the cover. Prominently placing this husband and wife team on the cover shows that today both men and women are welcome under what I like to call the big tent of geek. <laughs> In fact, there is also a recent book written by Sherry Innes entitled Geek Chic, Smart Women and Popular Culture. And, in 2004, there was an article in Time magazine entitled, Goddess of the Geeks, which featured Tina Fey, former head comedy writer and weekend update anchor on Saturday Night Live. Proving how far us geeks have come in recent years, Ms. Fey also appeared on a recent list of People magazine's most beautiful people. There's even a TV reality show now where they set up geeks with very attractive members of the opposite sex. This show is called, appropriately enough, Beauty and the Geek. My, what a glorious age we live in. What a wonderful time to be a geek. And the influence of geeks has even spread into the realm of politics. You'd be hard pressed nowadays to find a candidate running for office that does not have a website, blog, or wiki used to drum up support. And, as a barometer of how mainstream geeks have become, consider the presidential election of 2000. If you remember, one of the candidates in this election had a reputation for being somewhat of a geek. The other, not so much. <laughs> I think you probably remember which is which. Uh, I doubt few of his supporters would even consider George W. Bush a genuine enthusiast for education and knowledge. <laughs> of course, the geek I'm talking about here is Al Gore. That's right, the same Al Gore who once claimed he invented the internet, and more recently won an Oscar for his movie-slash-PowerPoint presentation about global warming. <laughs> You probably remember in 2000, Al Gore, even with all of his geekish traits, actually won the popular vote and came within 538 votes in Florida to become the first geek president of the United States. By the time the next election rolled around, 2004, I believe the country had reached the tipping point and was finally ready to truly uh, to elect its first geek president. John Kerry had some geek-like tendencies but I don't think he was ever able to really embrace his inner geek. <laughs> Remember that time he tried to look cool in that windsurfing outfit? Bad move. <laughs> but there's one more interesting thing I learned about the word geek from the Oxford English Dictionary. It turns out, according to the OED, that the first time the word geek was used was in uh, the first time the word geek was used in the English language was on October 29th, 1916 where the word geek, G-E-E-K, appeared in the Wells Fargo Messenger. And here's the quote. A new Wells agent struck our town the other week and say, you never saw a more enthusiastic geek. Aha! Enthusiasm! There it is, right there in the first ever printed example of the word geek. It's enthusiasm, not pocket protectors or computer programming that should define the modern geek. Geeks are enthusiastic about what they do. They don't care if their interests are perceived as trendy or cool by others. Geeks are authentic. They are genuine. They are true to themselves and they follow their passions no matter where they lead. Geeks are confident in themselves. They do not worry too much about what other people think of them. Being a geek nowadays is not necessarily about the gadgets, 
Although we modern geeks do owe a debt of gratitude to the techno-obsessed geeks of a previous generation, I believe being a geek nowadays is first and foremost about being enthusiastic about what you do. This is why I believe that these postmodern geeks are a different breed than their clumsy, disliked, and inept predecessors. And therefore, I believe they deserve a new name. How about Geek 2.0? <laughs> An interest in technology is no longer sufficient to define the Geek 2.0. There are 2.0 geeks in all fields. There are music geeks, literature geeks, psychology geeks, there are geeks of business, geeks of education, geeks of the arts. Today's geeks are the creators in our society, not merely the consumers. Our very own President Dahl would probably consider himself a genuine enthusiast for education and knowledge about early 19th century British literature. 2.0 geeks approach their crafts with a passion that can be all-consuming. So, this is my charge to you as you begin your college careers. Go out, explore, challenge your professors, dig into your studies, find that subject that really gets you excited, something you can become genuinely enthusiastic about. Each of the fantastic professors that sit before you here tonight would be delighted to tell you all about their geekish passions. Allow them to guide you on your quest for geek status. But, promise me, because I don't want to get in trouble, just don't get too carried away and start biting the heads off of chickens. <laughs> Personally, I am a physics geek, and I would be thrilled to take some time here to tell you all about our brand new 1.7 million volt tandem Pelotron accelerator from the National Electrostatics Corporation of Middleton, Wisconsin, Model 5 SDH. <laughs> that comes fully equipped with an RC-43N station capable of performing a wide variety of state-of-the-art ion beam analytical techniques, such as uh, proton-induced X-ray emission, nuclear reaction analysis, and Rutherford backscattering spectrometry. But alas, it's getting late, so I'd better wrap things up. Besides, I really want to get home in time to watch Babylon 5. <laughs> on what is sure to be a fascinating journey through college life. Let me welcome you to Geneseo and sum up my charge to you with the following two-word phrase, which, as it turns out, also serves as my farewell to you all. Geek, out. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Freeman, for that scintillating etymological excursus. 